The docu-series on Netflix called Escaping Twin Flames has a lot of people in Michigan talking, and the reason why we are showing you live pictures of Leelanau County right now in northern Michigan is because that's where Twin Flames Universe was based. It promises people that they can find their soulmate through pricey coaching and also separating some people from their families. Take a look. He took my child. He twisted her memories, her mind. I haven't seen her in over three years. Most of this great wealth comes directly from teaching others how to have beautiful, healthy, loving, romantic relationships. I thought that everything in my life was going good, but I was just missing my true love. You too can have harmonious union. I found people that I can relate to and I can trust. We had 38,000 people in the group. This is the story of falling in love. They were saying things like, are you ready for the ultimate love of your life? What Jeff and Shalia do has nothing to do with love. This is so interesting. Author and true crime expert Scott Bernstein with me now. Hey, Scott, it's good to see you. Um, I mean, when we start talking about this story, you know, the first couple of scenes of this docu-series is um, a 911 call to Leelanau County. And I, are you having a party there where, where you are right now? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had some people in my background. Apologies. That's okay, you're good, you're good. Um, so let's go ahead and, and talk about this. Explain exactly what Twin Flames Universe is. I mean, I attempted it, a new agey kind of finding love and finding your soulmate, but then it morphed into a religion, it morphed into eating programs. How would you explain this, Scott? I mean, I, I would say this is a, a, a life coaching apparatus that's being sold that, you know, you started, like you said, it started as I'm gonna, uh, or we're gonna help you find your soulmate, your quote unquote twin flame. Um, and then it morphed into, I'm gonna tell you how to eat. I'm gonna tell you how to dress. I'm gonna tell you who to sleep with. I'm gonna tell you um, who to pray to. And uh, right now, you know what, let's just be very clear. Uh, there's been um, no uh, charges of criminal activity right now, but, I know there are investigations that are that are taking place at the local level and the federal level, but I also want to just back up for a second and, and let the audience know, although right now uh, this operation is, is based uh, near Sutton Bay in Leelanau County, uh, up until a couple years ago, it was based in Metro Detroit in Farmington Hills. Um, and Jeff Aon, the guru leader of this group, uh, it was born and raised in Lapeer. So it, it has, you know, uh, connections to right where we are here right now. Yeah, and Scott, let me ask you this, because when does it morph, or an organization morph from something that is just, you're, you're able to join these coaching programs, you want to pay for this coaching programs, to now some people say that this is a cult. I mean, I've used the phrase accused cult, but where is the line that crosses into that territory? Well, let's also be clear that having a cult and leading a cult is not illegal. Um, it becomes illegal when, you know, you start behaving in a criminal manner to either uh, exploit your followers or take their money um, or take other people's money. And that has not been proven yet. Uh, so, but yeah, it, it morphed. It, it, there was a evolution here, I think, from uh, one goal, which was getting a lot of people there and paying money for these courses. Let's just be very clear at the uh, the money grabs here. Uh, the, I think the, you can pay for like a $5,000 one-time shot, or they have thousands of people paying them $2,500 a month. And when you have anywhere between uh, 15 and 50,000 followers, you do the math. If, if, these, if, if even a small fraction of them are paying you $2,500 per month. But again, uh, so I think I mean, it went from 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, but, but again, like making the line, I know that this um, has been investigated. His organization was investigated by Farmington police. I mean, they have that even in the written, in the documentary. Right. Um, but it's, it's kind and of it, that And the Farmington line. police passed on to the FBI. I know right now that the FBI in Michigan is uh, investigating this group and doing interviews. I don't know where it will lead, but I know that the investigation um, is focusing on potential uh, allegations of sex trafficking, as well as uh, a, a pyramid or a Ponzi scheme. But none of that has been proven. But right, I and, and again, are... and I think that's what it speaks to. Where where does it cross over between people who openly say, you know, I'm leaving my family, I want to be part of this organization, and then you know, in this docu series, you see how the leaders kind of deputize people who have joined the group to say, now you're coaches right. and you're leaders, and now you get to bring in more people who are paying you, who you in turn are paying us to be able to right. dispense this advice. And then it, let's also uh, let people know that uh, when the Farmington Hills report was made, that the Farmington police went to the residence and it wasn't just uh, Jeff and Shalea there. They had, I think, five followers, quote unquote, that were doing various chores. Like they have them cleaning their house and uh, landscaping and um, uh, so forth, doing their laundry. And the police interviewed these five followers and were convinced that they were there uh, by their own free will. So, but I think when you start, I, I think we're burying the lead a little bit here, and part of that's my, my fault, uh, that what's, what this thing has evolved into now is Jeff and, and, and Shalea telling people that they should have gender reassignment surgery. I mean, it's really kind of jumped the shark in that regard. I mean, these people are claiming that they're doing these gender reassignments uh, on their free will, but <laughs> you look at, you, you backtrack it and you deep dive it, and these are people that never had any sexual uh, identification issues in their life. They never felt like they were in the wrong gender. And then Jeff and Shalea tell them, you know what, you're a biological male, but I think God wants you to be a biological female, and then all of a sudden they're taking steps to become a biological female or the other way around. It's, uh, it, 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 it appears to people that they're playing God. It's um, part of that theory that they talk about is the divine masculine and the divine feminine that they talk right. to their followers about and, and, and finding that. So, uh, you know, is that part of something, again, where's the illegal line, though, that they can say that we're just coaching right. people to find who they believe they truly are? Right from from a, from from just a you know an analysis. I know there are people that have looked at it and and they they see this um, this delineation point where Jeff and Shalea are telling people that uh, they can find them their soulmate, their true love, their twin flame, uh, and then after a handful of years, there weren't enough twin flame matchings or, or harmonious unions, and people were starting to get. Uh, vocal about the fact that they were paying all this money and they weren't receiving what they were promised. It, it looks like, based on the timeline, it was at that point that Jeff and Shalea kind of pivoted away from the traditional um, man-woman uh, uh, love uh, paradigm, I guess, and moved to this, well, maybe uh, people that think they're female are actually male, people that are male actually uh, are actually female and that we 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 have some uh you know a, a telephone line into god who's telling us what what gender uh, you should be like you like you said they call it divine feminine or divine masculine saying that like this is your you're a male you've always identified as a male but your true uh your true identity is as a female so I, I do want to point out, you know, Jeff and Shalea are still operating the Twin Flame universe right now, and they have yeah. said that the allegations levied against Twin Flames universe not only distorts our true aims and methods and curriculums, but also misrepresent the autonomy of our community members, and they're committed to confronting these allegations in an open and accountable member, um, in an accountable way. But you say, Scott, that you, there are active investigations right now, though no charges have been made, but there right. are agencies that are still are looking into them, especially specifically because this documentary is out? Well, I think there, are, again, I, I want to uh, put a little more context in here. There's been a, a flood of bad press over the last year, but definitely in the last three or four months. You have the Netflix 
documentary, but you also have an Amazon Prime documentary. Both of these documentaries have been helmed by very acclaimed documentarians. Uh, one uh, did the Nexum documentary, I think on HBO, and one did the Roman Polanski documentary. Uh, these are very, very talented uh, filmmakers. I also want to just point out, I guess I, I am a lawyer, I have a law degree. My amateur legal analysis here is where they could possibly come into legal problems here is that, and then another thing I want to point out, I, I also kind of bury the lead on this. What's very unique about this is that if 99% virtual, most quote unquote cults uh, are, are in person. Um, but this is basically all over uh, Zoom chats and YouTube lives and telephone calls. And uh, there's only been a handful of actual meetups of these people over the last decade. Uh, so that's unique. But then I think where he where they could run into problems, and again, this is just, I'm not saying they are, but just a, a, an analysis of this, is that they're moving people across the country over state lines. and it, if you if you believe the people that are being interviewed on these docs, it looks like they're being moved from one state to the other um, for the purposes of sex in some some cases, um, where these people are being told that uh, their soulmate is in a different state. They say, well, we don't really even like that soulmate. We don't want to do anything with that soulmate, and they're being told to kind of go to, there to move and, and then to the, go. Yeah. And then the yeah. soulmate is being told, allegedly, by Jeff and Shalea that the, this person, this woman, is going to come there and she'll do anything you want sexually. So yeah. it, it looks like there could be some violations of the Man Act, but again, I, I'm not positive. All right. It's Scott Bernstein, author and true crime expert, I you know, really appreciate uh, your deep dive on this one. This is something that a lot of people are going to be watching because it has been so popular on Netflix, this docu-series. It's good to see you. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Yep. All righty.